you and I had a kind of similar start in terms of like you know the games we played growing up. Yeah. And then we and then we found one another. We kind of did. We didn't working at Jinx. Yeah. Um, where we <laughs> here you you and I, I think were the t- the two first proper like presenters that they brought into Apart from Julia Harding. That's true. Julie was there before us, actually. Yeah. But we came in and uh, from very different backgrounds. For sure. Do you remember what your first gig was working at Jinx, where we first where we first kind of met each other? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do quite painfully, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, I'll tell you what. The first gig was different from the first first gig. So the right. first gig, I, was cu- I came in to do a pilot show in which I talked about movie sequ- movie games based on movies in real life so okay so, so games based i didn't know that on the film. i had no idea this was a thing it was called that hollywood thing right and they wanted to do 52 <laughs> okay. episodes there aren't even 52 movie games made Fif- 52 episodes the first there season was, was 50- like let's do 52 shows let's do a year let's, let's do, do a, year. a year. year this is a good format let's do a year right that's ambitious so i did the uh did this the, the pilot yeah uh on avatar okay the game I didn't even know there was a game for Avatar, exactly. but how was that? Okay, that was... Maybe the PS3. So you had to do a 30-minute show on that game? Yeah. That's a stretch. I mean... Oh, I can't remember about the game. I mean, what do you talk about? So that was... The, so you walked... So you had the first... Your first kind of... Because I'm really curious, because I have a completely different story right. how mine kind of started. But yours... So you kind of... You walked in and you, did you do like an audition? Or was it just yeah, yeah. Of... I had to... Um, I had to read some voiceover. They okay. asked me about games, which we uh, skirted away because... <laughs> I mean, I'd, I, between the age of 19 and 25, I'd only played Pro Evolution Soccer. Okay. I mean, so I kind of lost touch with games. Of that. Yeah. Okay. But I did a, the reason I got on with Jinx was because when I was like 24, I and my friend called Dermot, we just started drawing classic album, music album covers using Microsoft Paint. So we just draw yeah. on Microsoft Paint. Like Bad by Michael Jackson, Off the Wall, Blur, like Oasis. Oasis, definitely maybe, whatever. We'd redo the real cover, but we'd draw it in Microsoft Paint. Right, and was that, was that just, for, was just, just, like for, for, just fun. for fun? It was okay. a Facebook group, but, but then our friends got involved and started sending them us, to us, putting them on the group. So then we had like 50, and then their friends did. And then we had like loads and loads and then we started doing a little YouTube show about people would send them in from like Brazil. <laughs> and like, serious? Yeah. And, okay. and, and people would say, oh, I've done this one of Britney Spears. Can you critique it? Be like, well, her eyes are a bit wonky. But yeah, <laughs> you've got her, you've got, you've got Britney Spears. Oh, I love it. I love really it. Really well. I love it. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, it became like a Tony, Tony Hart's like art show about music. And then we got loads of um, like NME and, and loads of magazines started like interviewing us about these Microsoft Paint covers and then we put them in an art gallery. What? So I like became an artist. I became like Tracy Emin. I didn't know I didn't yeah, know yeah. this. So we did like this YouTube show. Like an art show. Like an send arch- in their album covers they'd redone on Microsoft Paint. And you would from all over them, the world. And you just critique them. Yeah and, and we got like I got a call from like, hello, I'm from So 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 magazine in Germany. We'd like to do a feature on your Microsoft Paint album covers. Do you want to talk about them? But like Sorry, how did you get this number? <laughs> and they were just like enemy. They did a feature, Word magazine. That's insane. Yeah. I, had, I had no idea We've about got this. Like thousands and thousands of these. Okay. Some people tried to cheat. People used to send in, if there was one that was drawn like a graphic designer, I think there was a Slipknot album. They just sent it in as it was. Right. I remember, like, mate, that's, you haven't done anything to that. And another one people did, they used to put the, upload the album cover onto Microsoft Paint like that, and then draw over it. Oh, can't trace. That, you, you can't, can't trace. trace. You cannot trace. Who traces? I became like a police officer and a detective. Yeah. It became an admin nightmare. Although, had, if someone was to brass rub a, a, oh. a I would be interested in that's seeing that. That's how they used to do it in the medieval times. It is. So anyway, um, Jinx, for some reason, liked the comedy show that I did. Mm-hmm. So they realized that I, you know, it came from a pop culture aspect. And they were like, right, we like this guy. We haven't, there's no evidence he has anything to do with games. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll just... But let's just get him in. Come in for an audition. Let's just get him in. Come in for an audition where you can talk about video games. I was like, they were like, you know about video games, right? I was like, yeah. 
Jeff went to Ritz Video Store. Had Sonic 1 on the Master System. I mean, come on. Exactly. Yeah. I know about the Game Gear. He had a hang glider in the Sonic on that. And I played Pro Evolution Soccer for five years. That's basically an eSport. There you go. So, yeah, they brought me in. I had to pretend. I, I, I presented a show called The Blurb. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, Julia yeah. Hardy presented it first, and she did a brilliant job. Yeah, it was on. It was the first show they had that went on to Sky, wasn't it? On, yeah, on sure. like it was Challenge. On Bravo as well. Oh, Bravo's Bravo, okay, okay. And I, I had to, I had to write and present a half-hour show every week about video games, about the new releases, about interviewing big sort of developers. Yeah. About talking about my thoughts on it. And it, just went on Wikipedia. You my, just go on Wikipedia. There's enough there. My my my, uh, my introduction was was so different to yours. To that, well, did to you that, know about games? Well, yeah, well, I knew about games. So I, now I it play feels games. Like I know more. Well, I play games. You. I think a bit more than you had. Right. I play games quite a lot, sure. but like not 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 to a level that I was obsessively playing them. But you know, I kind of knew what was what was coming out and what yeah. was what there was. You know, I always have done, but. With um with me it was I they kind of brought me into kind of audition the same kind of thing as you it was like you know oh you know what what games do you like and I kind of gave my you know favorite games that kind of stuff and I have an unbelievable accolade I've mentioned many times which is I was the blockbuster I know Doctor Disrespect says this all the time that he's a two time blockbuster video game champion but I genuinely was for for one week of my life the blockbuster UK video game champion for Donkey Kong Country wow. that's official my, my my name was on every blockbuster video in the country. It was the biggest accolade of my life. See, during that, I thought you were saying you went on Blockbusters, the game show. No, I didn't do that. Right. But I wish I had. Because that's way more impressive if you'd gone on Blockbusters. That's more because impressive. Because that was a difficult... To get all the way through that... I did go on Are You Smarter Than a 10-Year-Old, though. Yeah, but that's like a nonsense game, isn't it? Yeah, it's Where not the same. It's just like, are, are you smarter than a 10-Year-Old? Yes, I am. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yes, that's true. Yes, I'm definitely smarter Blockbusters than a is a lot more kind of like strategy involved. They than could like... have shortened that game. You just come on and they say, are you smarter than a 10 year old? Like, yeah, mm, I am. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I th- yeah, yeah, I yeah, am. You're right. I am. Like, what does there. a 10 year old know? Well, Loads about dinosaurs. Oh, that's it. When I, when, just make sure it's not about dinosaurs. Yeah, what well, yeah, we But even then, their is knowledge tricky. is waning. Well, I know, I know. Five I know. year olds, they know all about dinosaurs. They know lots about dinosaurs and about the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, For which, sure. is, which is big yeah, too. Yeah, of course. Big, big, Turkish big. delight. Turkish delight. Big lamp, Victorian lamps. Yes. Wardrobes, mothballs. Five year olds know it all. Exactly. Thomas and the Tank if you Engine get the well. right nanny, she will fly. Yeah. And she will that's, make your family that's, happy. But that's not the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. That's Mary oh, that's Poppins. Poppins. Right. That's Mary Poppins. I'm getting my. I'm getting my Nursery rhymes confused. It's not a nursery rhyme. <laughs> it's not a nursery rhyme. Okay. It's not a nursery rhyme. With with, uh, with my audition when I first when I first came into Jinx, after I did that that kind of like you know kind of bit that you did piece of camera about like what yeah. I like to do and stuff, they got me to do this um, this five games that you have to play at the end of the world, but not just games in general, but like at the end mo- of the world. Yeah, if the, if, the, if Armageddon like happened, like a flat Earth thing. Yeah, the, no, no. The, like if the end of the world happened, like the, and you and you survived somehow. Oh right. What five games would you have to have on your mobile phone? Right, but you wouldn't have necessarily have electricity to charge or, it, or or a network or anything. But wouldn't you be? You'd probably be using your phone to do other things, like a torch. You wouldn't be wasting your battery playing games. Well, this was a pilot again, a very short and, TV show, and that's what they're for. They're pilots are for pilots, testing, testing, yeah. testing new theories and new kind of you know. <laughs> it's not a theory. It's not really, is it? But uh, new narratives for, sure. for shows, yeah. Uh, and this one, I, I filmed things all around town, and I, and I had to kind of dress up as if I was, I was kind of all like dirty and like a suit, and I was like living like Tom Hanks in Castaway, right. but in central London, surrounded by cars and people that just going about their daily lives. Kind of like Tom Hanks in the Terminal. Yeah, I was like that. Has he? Has Tom Hanks just done every every film where he's alone? Yes. Right. Let's just say yeah. Toy Story. Toy alone Story. Alone in that a bit. In a in a in a voice booth. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. For sure. Likes spending a lot of time by himself. He likes. Does Tom Hanks know anyone else? He, he's his own best friend. Wow. Yeah, it's true. But we we went on to obviously do loads of different shows there to, at, at Jinx together. I did like Planet of the Apps, like yeah. a, a few app sh- shows and stuff. You did like the uh, you did like Game Sport, we, Game Sport, mm. Game Sport. Yeah, game what sport. was Game Sport? Game Sport was a half hour TV show about sports video games. Right. Again, fifty two episodes <laughs> straight off the bat. <laughs> Let's do a year. Let's not test this out. Let's go full on fifty two. There's not many sports games. I mean, there's definitely FIFA. There's definitely Pez. After that, I mean, when you're having to do a whole half hour sh- about Tour de France, the video game, <laughs> it's oh a cycling my God. game. Was that a thing you did? Yeah, a half, just, half know, an like, hour show on Tour de France. Yeah, so I used to, I used to just kind of again. I mean, I know a lot about sport, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, kind of my background, but just I just do. I did mad features like uh, animals of sport. 
animals. I don't yeah. know how. What like animals that were inside the sports game? No, like just in real life. Like I just made up uses for animals in sport. Like not like horses in horse racing, but like right, like golf. Okay. If your ball got lost in the woods, you could hire like a woodland animal to go and find it for you. Okay. Like a, you could train a magpie, or like it, like to a, go and to go and get it. If you pl- if you painted your golf ball silvery, have like a magpie, go and then and you find had a it. magpie sort of on your shoulder, or like attached to like a tether on the bag. This and then sh- if you I'm, then you then you'd save a lot of time at the golf course. This show seems a little far fetched. Yeah, it, it seems was, a little I mean, bit like you were, you were you were clutching at straws early doors. It was fifty two episodes. You had to, you had to go. What down else that route. did you have to do? You had to. Uh, Formula One, like animals in Formula One. I mean, I mean, uh, you, you could. What would have you use? Just like a, a little chipmunk or, or someone, just to keep you company in yeah. the cabin. We'll make it like Mario in Kart and like, introduce animals at certain areas in the course that would yeah. kind of be like hazards. You have to kind of swerve, and it's like a that's right. Obstacle or, or something. I don't the know. fastest bird in the world is what a peregrine falcon. Okay, and they're about the same speed as a Formula One car. So if you had a peregrine they're, wait, they're, they're the same speed as a Formula One car. I think so. I haven't really researched it, but oh, if you had a Peregrine Falcon driving ahead of your car, then you could tell when to turn corners because they'd be they'd be doing it first. How do you know when to to turn? You know when you're swimming in Olympic swimming, and yeah. then the the walls there, and then you've got to do a somersault to like kick off and then go back. Yes. If you had like a little tall turtle at the bottom. And you saw that. You, then, when you'd see the turtle, you know when to. <laughs> Was they going? Turn. Keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> no, just at the bottom by the turning point. Right. So two turtles, one at each wall. Then you'd see the turtle. But right, I'm going to do the forward roll now. Right. So that, that would shave this off is, milliseconds. This is, ex- uh, this is this is really like I'm, I feel kind of uncomfortable right now. This this show really? sounds so it's so so barking mad that it's, it's not it's just normal and it got 52 episodes 52 epi- well more when than was 52. it when, when, when was the animal part was it like kind of episode six seven yeah early doors early early on i mean what sports are there seven uh, what sports games it's, uh, even less <sighs> i mean it was it was a hard but sell. were you having a good time though doing had it? a great time, great time because time. i got to just write a show and no one checked it well because it's we, like you know um you know if you were doing your gcses or whatever yeah and you're just doing your coursework and you hand it in and, and your teacher marks it, right? Yeah. With this, I handed it in. No one checked it. <laughs> it went out on television. <laughs> and then they were just like, right, do the next one. You know, it was every, I mean, the, the, the camaraderie in the team was pretty amazing as well. Like the fact yeah. that it was like, right, here we go. There's a bunch of producers and writers. Whatever. Just make, make some stuff just that you find interesting. Stuff, yeah. And there was no like, oh, you know, obviously we had budget you know, restraints and things, but it was more a case of if you, if you want to make something you're passionate about doing, go for it, which I think yeah. for us was amazing. Fact, having that freedom was crazy good. But, but there wasn't any money, which was great because you had to really think about what to do. Yeah. So like we went to film at the producer's house. Like a lot of the locations were just in someone's house. Yeah. And then Adam... We utilised a lot of mum's basements and yeah, attics. Yeah, well, that's right. And like we went to his house and I was like, oh, your attic looks good. He was like, yeah, it's a good attic. It's a bit d- dusty in that. And I was like, why don't we film something in the attic? And that's where we did Retro Attic, <laughs> where I just talked about like old video games in his mum's attic. That is, I mean, and fantastic. It was great because it's a great set. Great set. It's ready done. It's ready to you'd roll. You'd have to pay like thousands for that in like London. Yeah, you would. If you wanted to book someone's attic, you'd have to pay money for it. But if someone's already got an attic, just yeah. go and film there. That went out on it challenge. Was. You know, it, it's just it was, and, it, and it, I definitely it was it was a a, a real kind of like. Um, it was like a, a learning yeah. you know, kind of scheme where we could learn everything from writing to um, presenting, presenting, editing, voiceover, like, editing. And, yeah, and we even I think you and I as well. Like we had our fair share of voiceovers as well because yeah. a lot of this stuff was not just it wasn't just like films kind of presented magazine show kind of stuff. It was a good way to begin. It was a good night. It was a nice start to our friendship. Yeah. 